from the company that built the incredible Intimidator 305 comes a ride that is nowhere near as good, but somehow still managed to beat it at the Golden Ticket Awards. The other Intimidator. Alright, best roller coaster. Go. Intimidator. Hands down. Couldn't agree more. I mean, it's relentless from start to finish. Plus, the Dale Earnhardt theme is awesome. Oh yeah. I really love how they start with, gentlemen, start your engines. It really sets the mood. And don't forget the awesome red colors. And it's really just one of those rides that you just want to hop in line again for. Oh man, I really want to ride it. <laughs> I mean, we could just go to King's Dominion after school. King's Dominion? I was talking about Carowinds. Ah. You loved how Carowinds had all the classic Carolina themed rides like Carolina Cobra, even though there aren't any Cobras in the Carolinas. And the Carolina Cyclones, even though there aren't any Cyclones in the Carolinas. And the Carolina Gold Rusher, even though they're... Uh, oh. Ne never mind. Now ride a ride themed to Dale Earnhardt, which has absolutely nothing to do with the rest of the park. Come on, Carowinds, what happened to the Carolina Intimidator? You missed a beautiful opportunity! But I mean, it could have been worse. They could have put Intimidator in an African-themed section. You loved the days when Intimidator was the tallest and fastest ride in the Carolinas. Now watch as the park installs Fury 325, a ride which completely obliterates all of Intimidator's self-confidence. So, I guess you could say Intimidator's a bit... intimidated? Get in what looks like a 20 minute line, which ends up being more like an hour and 20 minutes because of continuous stacking. Isn't Intimidator supposed to be a high capacity ride? <laughs> well, obviously not. They do the same thing on Diamond Stack and Behemoth stack. Maybe it's supposed to do that. Hang out in the Intimidator line and notice how many inchworms cover your body. No need to worry, this is a perfectly normal thing to experience at Carowinds. Get to the front of the line and hope to ride at the front row, only to be directed to sit in the middle of the train by one of the park employees, whose sole job is to disappoint people. I drove four hours here. I should be able to sit in the front if I want. Like, what the heck? Not cool. I know, I hate that. It's so stupid. I drove five minutes here, I just want to sit in the middle, but they keep putting me in the front, what the heck? <sighs> you suck. Depart the station and listen to the voice of a dying man as he tells you to start your engines. <laughs> Dang, that guy needs to start his engines. Ascend the lift hill and dive into the exact same drop you'll find on every other B&M hyper. Except, instead of a view of a bunch of trees, you get a view of a parking lot. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, just think. Now Intimidator can join the same club that Titan and Gatekeeper are in. Man, that sure is a good looking parking lot. Keep going. Pull up into a massive elevated turn and drop into the first of many airtime hills. Where, believe it or not, you actually do get airtime. <laughs> Who would have thought? I love airtime hills. So Intimidator was the best thing ever. I wanted to try Thunder Road because it had great airtime hills, but I couldn't find it anywhere. Do you know where it is? Okay, who wants to tell her? And now that you've repeated the same element five times in a row, glide into the classic Cedar Fair B&M ending. A mid-course break run and helix. And then breaks. Cause I mean, let's be honest, that's the same ending for every freaking roller coaster. And at long last, the ride is over, which means you can wake up now. It's not that the ride is bad, it's just that... Wait a minute. Steep drop. L-shaped layout. Bank turnaround. Airtime. Helix. Long break run. This sounds exactly like Fury's layout. What, did you run out of ideas or something? Intrimidator. You probably won't be intimidated by it anymore at Carowind.